we need to understand why wounds on the lower limb are not healing. Well, firstly, it's because they're on the leg. Secondly, if your patient has any of the conditions listed on this slide, then they are at risk of harm and developing a lower limb wound or leg ulcer. For example, if you've got a patient with a combination of conditions such as um, poor mobility and increased age, and then you're adding that uh, the trauma to, a, to a, um, a bang in the garden on the lower leg, then that's the ideal recipe for a leg ulcer. The pictures on the slide illustrate early signs of venous disease and venous hypertension. And in the top slide, there's very obvious, dam uh, very obvious signs of venous damage in that top picture. And the mal the valve on the bottom shows some mild swelling. And I just get you to think about your own legs this evening. Um, and are they feeling heavy at night and slightly swollen? Mine certainly are indicating I've got some uh, mild venous disease going on. So in venous disease, the pressure builds until it's got nowhere else to go and starts to leak into the tissue spaces. And this causes a cycle of inflammation, which leads to ulceration. Reduced muscle movement can lead to swelling or edema as lymphatics are dependent on muscle movement to help fluid travel through the vessels. And accumulation of tissue fluid and blood from poorly functioning vessels is what delays wounds from healing as our skin is not able to function normally. Venous disease as well is a public health issue and a long-term condition for, for many. And it, there's a huge opportunity for health promotion and prevention in skin tears, mouth swelling and early signs of venous disease.